What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Ryan here and today I want to talk about why you should learn the C programming language as a JavaScript developer. So learning the C language is one of the best things that ever happened to me because it showed me what's going on under the hood and one of the issues with learning JavaScript early on as one of my first languages is that it's such a high level language that it hides a lot of the details from you. For me, learning the C language was that thing that filled in a lot of the gaps for me. So what I wanna to do today is actually a comparison between JavaScript and C. What we're gonna do is, I have this file called data.txt and it has 40 characters of data and we're gonna read this data and just print it to the log. So the first let's do this in JavaScript. So we need fs, then we're gonna say text equals fs.readfile sync, I'll do that. And then data.txt should specify UTF-8. We're gonna console.log that. And let's go ahead and run it. And boom, that's simple. We were able to use JavaScript to read some text from a file and print it out. So now let's try the same thing in C. This is gonna be kind of fun. So first we have this main function. It returns an integer. This is the exit code. Returning zero generally means success. Returning a non-zero exit code means failure. And here's some two libraries that we're gonna include. Uh, so stdio, that's standard input output. That's gonna allow us to print stuff to the console. Then we have stdlib, which is standard library that allows us to allocate memory. First, as a sanity check, let's just do a simple hello world application and see if we can run this thing. So I'm actually gonna use puts, which means put string. It's just gonna print this string to the terminal. With C, so C is a compiled language. It's not like Node where you use Node to execute the thing. With C, you have to first build the binary and then you run that binary as a direct executable. So GCC is pretty common. Chances are you already have this installed even if you never explicitly installed this. So we use GCC, specify the output. I'm gonna say main, no file extension really needed. If you're on Windows, you might wanna do .exe, but I'm not. So I'm gonna do GCC O main and then specify main.c. This is gonna create my binary here that we can see on the left. Then I'm gonna execute that. And there we go, it printed it out. Now I'm gonna actually combine these. I'm gonna add clear just to clear the terminal. And then once it's compiled, I'm gonna have it run that. So I could just run this all in one swift command. Sweet, so now we have a basic C application. So the first thing I wanna do is create a file pointer. So file fp equals f open data.txt. I'm gonna open it in read mode. The next thing we need to do is check this pointer to make sure it's not nil. Then we wanna print and say could not open file. And we wanna return a non-zero exit code. Okay, cool, so we've opened this one thing we might want to do now, just so we don't forget, is f close the file. So in C, when you create a resource, you generally have to clean it up afterwards. Otherwise, funny things might happen later on. Sweet, so we've opened the file. Now what we want to do is figure out the length of the file. So we're going to use something called fseek, and we're going to pass it the file, the offset, which is zero, and then seek end, which is a constant, this is basically gonna take the internal cursor that's inside of that file object and it's gonna move that to the end of the file. Then we can grab the length of that, file length equals ftel fp. So this is gonna tell us where the cursor is inside of the file handler. And then we wanna make sure to rewind the file pointer because that internal cursor is still pointed at the end. And now let's go ahead and print out the length of the file just to make sure it's right. So this should be 40 characters is what my IDE is saying. So we should get back 40. Okay, now let's see if it's reporting it correctly. So yep, file length 40, there we go. Sweet, now we're reading the file and we're getting the length of the file. So now what we need to do is allocate memory to store the text data from this file. So we're gonna use char text equals m alloc and then file length. First of all, uh, C doesn't have strings. It has basically arrays of individual characters, which you would say, well, that's a string, but that's not how C sees it. So here you'll see we have a char, which char is generally used to represent a character in C. 
like the letter G, for example, but it can also represent a number as well because it's really just bytes. Um, now, the pointer here is used to indicate that this is an array, right? We're pointing to the first element of the array, but it's an array. M alloc, what M alloc does, it means memory allocation. It's gonna allocate a block in memory for whatever size that we specify. In this case, file length, 40 bytes. M alloc, what it's gonna do is it's going to reserve that block of memory, and then it's gonna give us an address to that memory. It gives us back a pointer. And that's why we're able to assign this char pointer to the return value of m alloc. Now, anytime you allocate memory, a very important thing is you gotta free that memory as well. Otherwise, it's just gonna linger there until the application is terminated. Okay, cool, so now that we've allocated the memory, we need to actually read the data from the file into memory. And there's actually a pretty straightforward way to do that in C. So we've got f read, we're gonna give it the text then it wants the size of the element, so size of char. Then it wants the number of items, which is file length, and then the actual file pointer. Now, we can actually print this data from memory. So we're gonna do printf that string text. We can actually just do puts and then text. So if we run this, there we go. It printed our data to the terminal for us. So there you go, there's a comparison of reading data in C, right? We gotta load the file, get a handler for the file, get the length of the file, allocate some data, print that and free the data versus in JavaScript where, well, just really this one line alone pretty much does all of that stuff for us under the hood. So you may have noticed that I'm using pointers here. So when we open the file, we got a pointer there. When we allocate memory for the char array, there's also a pointer here. Pointers are something you're just gonna have to get comfortable with. And I'm not gonna lie, I kid you not, for several years, I was scared of pointers and I kept revisiting it over and over, trying to understand it, but I just couldn't grasp it until finally I just took a deep dive into it and I finally started to understand it. So now I wanna talk about pointers in C. And the reason you use pointers is when you wanna modify some data. So let's say we have int x equals seven, and we wanna create a function called increment value. We pass it x, and then when we print x, we want this increment value function to increment the input by one. So let's create this increment value function and I'll have it say int n, and I'll say n equals n plus one. And let's see what happens. Well, x start off as seven. I expected it to be eight at the end, but it was still seven. And the reason is because this number is getting copied into here. Once you pass any parameter into a function, it's passed by copy. So when we do n equals n plus one, okay, it modified the copy of n, but it didn't modify n itself. So what we actually wanna do is turn this into a pointer, and then here we wanna dereference it. We wanna say the value of n equals the value of n plus one. And then here, increment value, we're gonna put an ampersand here and say we're passing in the address of x. So X is somewhere in memory. We wanna get the address, the memory address of X, which is actually the pointer. Now, when I run it, it does return eight because I'm modifying the value, the original value. So in these lower level languages, it's not uncommon to run into pointers and need to use them to get the job done. And the reason is because if you wanna do something efficiently and not use up too much memory, you don't wanna copy data around too much. Sometimes you wanna modify the values in place and pointers are what allow you to do that. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I think that learning C kind of is important because it's gonna boost your confidence as a developer. You'll be able to jump into GitHub and look at just about anything and I'm not gonna say you'll immediately understand it, but you'll be able to at least go line by line and understand what's happening at that level. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and support a little YouTuber like myself. Thanks for watching.